changes from today. Dublin Airport, uh, I'm sure, is very different for the first time in a long time. People there, lots of people there. Owen Corrie uh, joins me on the line now, travel expert. Good morning, Owen. How are you? Good morning, Good morning, Emer. Bolo Earth. What's it like, Owen? Are you noticing or are you hearing the stories from the airport? And I was wondering if people were almost sorry to be leaving Ireland now with the, with the weather going so well for us at the moment. Oh, our, our great heat wave, because of course we all know that happens every year. No, um, <laughs> exactly. The, the reality is that uh, it's a little bit busier. We have 128 flights, we've got 22,000 people going through. That is a fraction of what would normally be going through this time of the year. Uh, it's not that enormously more busy. The Malaga flight, I'm out at the airport at the moment. Uh, you might hear a plane land behind me in a while. Uh, the uh, Malaga flight is a good gauge. It was about six, just over 60% full there in English flight this morning. Because this is the first day that we can legally travel. We were only supposed to be as unessential business to travel until now. And that's the major change. The other major change is fully vaccinated, full course of vaccination plus 14 days. You're entitled to travel. And up to the age of 12, you're entitled to travel without a test. The bit in the middle will still require a test, but there's convergence on it. Uh, antigen test outbound costs about 45 euro compared with uh, 90 or 95, depending on the operator for PCR. And the PCR test in return is much cheaper abroad uh, than it is here. So I suspect there will be a mixture of the different groups and a lot of the flights leaving. A very important question people who haven't got uh, the digital COVID certificate. We moved really late on this, but and it has been impressive what's been rolled out since last Tuesday. But a lot of people, particularly people people who've been vaccinated about GPs are still waiting. Yes, I heard a man who was travelling to Malaga this morning, Owen, saying that 11 weeks ago he was uh, vaccinated fully or got the second jab. And I know he's to wait a couple of weeks to be fully covered, but that he hadn't received it, so had to pay for the PCR. Yeah, well, the, the card, the card is, which is signed and has your batch number and your date, that has been accepted is it? Uh, by, the, by the airlines and by the immigration authorities. It's not been legislated for, though, Emer. So it's always a question when something isn't in the legislation. That or if uh, you meet someone who's having a bad day, they might make life difficult for you. Oh, dear. But it has been accepted, and it's really scared people. Not helped by the fact, by the way, we have uh, conflicting advice on the government's gov.ie website. A big change on Friday. It was signaled by the officials on Tuesday, but the politicians talked it down. And then on Friday, the website was changed. Everyone with the full course of vaccination in the UK or in the USA can arrive in Ireland without uh, a PCR test and without having to self-isolate. That's almost as big a change as the uh, digital COVID certificate. hasn't got as much coverage, but it's a seismic one, and it's really, really important. Uh, because it, you, there isn't going to be a lot of bucket and spade, not just the heat wave, but the, the, the sort of the hesitancy about travel. A lot of what's happening now is going to be the reconnection of families. 56 flights a week to Poland now through the summer. Um, that's the sort of... Uh, they're, they're, they're not holiday traditions holiday flights, they are reconnection of families. That's what will be going on. A lot of grandparents uh, haven't seen their grandchildren. Oh, and I I know people coming from the States. And what about going back the other way, Owen, if there are people in Ireland who want to reconnect with their family in the States? We're not allowed in. Very simple. We're not allowed in. Haven't been for a long time. We've got the most pro-Irish administration in the White House since uh, the 1960s. So, you know, obviously uh, anything that can be done at that level will probably be done to expedite it. It could happen in days. There are talks at European level to get that changed. And there are also the common travel area uh, complication with Britain would mean you'd have separate talks. I would expect it to change. I'd expect it to change suddenly. But as it has stands, fully vaccinated Americans can arrive in Ireland without a PCR and without having to self-isolate. We're not allowed to in the other direction. That could change uh, probably in a matter of days. Right. Where can we go? I know it's a basic enough question, but just to outline to people in as, general who as, are tuned in. As of today, as of today, the only absolute clarity we have is that we have unrestricted travel to European countries, all the EU countries, right. if, we've, if, we've got, if we're double vaccinated. Now, a lot of other countries that are interested in Europeans have also put in similar 
uh, conditions that if you're fully vaccinated, you can arrive there without any restrictions. I'm talking about places like Turkey, which would have a big inbound on the business. Within Europe, um, it, uh, if you aren't fully vaccinated, generally an antigen test, that's the convergence and the age after which, under, under which you can travel without requiring a test is 12. Uh, in some countries, still at six. Uh, they tend to be Northern European. Baltic uh, Germany is one of them. But most of them are 12. Slovenia, 17. Interesting outlier, Malta, only allowing fully vaccinated people in. If you aren't vaccinated, um, you're not getting in because they're not doing the testing. Uh, they're not allowing in tested people even. And they've t- turned their back really on the family market. It wasn't the biggest family destination at the start, the big wedding destination. But you can talk about the complications. Right. Pretty much if you're travelling within the European Union and you've, you've been through your full course of vaccination or you're under the age of 12, you're unrestricted today. OK. Um, and in reality, then, for people who don't have a digital COVID cert to travel in the EU, once they have their vaccination card, uh, more or less... Uh, it's being accepted on the ground. Right. That's the reality. Now, and, and that's the reality. And now the, the, the real problem is on the return, um, you may still require the PCR. We're still waiting clarification on that. But we have three different agencies here. We have the Department of Health bringing up uh, regulations, the Department of Foreign Affairs giving foreign travel advice, and the Department of Justice dealing with the immigration side. That's one of the things that slowed down and complicated the whole business. The rest of Europe introduced this on July the 1st. It's been working. The technology is awesome. Uh, scanning the QR code at the gate, uh, you just uh, scan your boarding pass, you tip top tip the top of the boarding pass and the QR code for your uh, vaccine cert pops up because you've uploaded it in advance by a for either Ryanair or Ryan Angus and you're scanned through. It's quite amazing how such a complex uh, uh, amount of information that has to be checked uh, is being processed so quickly. Okay, wow. Um, for people who are holidaying and maybe they put their holiday off for nearly two years at this stage, will it feel like a holiday? Does it depend on where you go? For instance, are, are places still closed down across Europe uh, depending on where, which city you arrive at? Yes, you're right. We're drowning in vouchers. People have uh, put off uh, on more than one occasion. Uh, local reg- regulations can mean um, changes and they can change quickly. What we've seen is uh, we've got the sixth highest case rate in Europe ourselves, but three of the countries above us are traditional holiday destinations, Spain, Portugal and Cyprus. Uh, two of the really low rates are uh, in traditional holiday locations are in Italy and Croatia. But what we've seen, uh, for instance, in Spain is um, local authorities uh, changing the regulations. Now, all of these countries are considerably more opened up than we are. So when uh, they do things like closing nightclubs, they, it, it is an impact, but it's not the uh, it, 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 it's not uh, anything like um, the, the the impact that closing indoor dining. Uh, would have done. There's also masking requirements that change regulations on that. A lot of European countries require masks to be worn outdoors all the time. Quite interestingly, the ones that opened indoor dining, uh, most, a lot, some of them required people to wear masks and outdoors all the time, which we didn't hear while we kept indoor dining closed. So there, were, there will be local regulations. Um, and will it seem like a holiday? Um, it's not going to be the holiday as we knew it. You're going to be masked flying. You're going to have to look out for things like um, the standard uh, yeah, liquid uh, regulations are still in place. Uh, one of our airlines is, is encouraging people to bring their bag on board. Uh, that's Ryanair. The other airline, Aer Lingus, is encouraging us not to bring a bag on board. That's Aer Lingus. And there will be as a uh, um, you, a mask, the mask can be removed on board when you're eating or drinking, but it is strictly enforced because airlines right. are, are keeping their own crew safe as well. Absolutely. Um, so all of those things have changed. And, um, they, People well, are asking me about them. children, Owen. Children under 12, for instance, um, a few texts in from listeners saying, do they have to be tested going to Turkey, no. going to EU destinations, family no. holidays? No, no. Under 12... Um, it, it, to all the standard hotel, southern, uh, or sorry, holiday, uh, southern holiday locations uh, under the age of 12 does not require a passport or a test or a vaccination. 
uh, some of them Baltic countries, the age limit of six. But our traditional Spain and Portugal, it's antigen test and under 12 does not require it. Over 12, not vaccinated, does. OK. OK. And it's antigen. And, and Oh, and you're enjoying the airport experience there, I'm sure. Are you watching I, the flights taking off? Yeah. We, 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 uh, watching, you going uh, anywhere nice? <laughs> no, I'm actually just out to, out to, to uh, prattle away to uh, a couple of uh, uh, news programmes and then uh, leave and come home again. But uh, okay. it's, 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 it's been interesting to talk to people out there. I was talking to uh, Dalton Phillips, I was talking to the CEO of Aer Lingus and uh, some of the people involved in the industry. And there's, while there's uh, a sense of we have, at least we've got to this day, there's a great sense that we have squandered a lot of time for no physical gain delaying the reopening of international travel. If it's good enough for the rest of Europe, why wasn't it good enough for us? Um, particularly when our case rate doesn't reflect that we have done better than anyone else. Interesting views. Thank you very much, Owen. All and right. we wish you well. We're going to play this for you. Hold me like you never oh, let yeah. me go. Enjoy your day. <laughs> Thanks very much, Owen. on a jet plane. Well, he's not on the jet plane, but he's on the ground at Dublin Airport. Thanks to Owen Corrie for keeping us up to date with all things travel. So today, the majority of EU states uh, begin operating the digital certificate and allowing people to travel within the EU. And it's no longer illegal to travel uh, from Ireland to an EU destination on your holidays. Weekday mornings from 10 till 12. This is KCLR Live.